The ACC Network proudly presents ACC Soccer, an in-state derby dating back 40 years. Ty Collins alongside Kyle Baum. The NC State Wolfpack and the Wake Forest Demon Deacons have met every season since 1980. This year's derby looked to be in doubt about two months ago, but the ACC found a way to salvage the season to an abbreviated schedule that looks like this. Two divisions, five teams in the south, five teams in the north, the top four in each region advance to the ACC tournament and carry. Wake gets Clemson home and home as well as this Wolfpack team. Kyle, the Pack were in action last Saturday night in their first divisional match versus Duke. Yeah, it got wrenching way to start the season as they lost 1-0 on the road in double overtime. Nick Periano scoring the game winner for the Blue Devils with 35 seconds left, a messy goal. But that's been a microcosm of their style of play, have the Wolfpack. They've struggled in the attack, shut out six times last year, and managed just one shot on goal the whole game last weekend. A team that doesn't have any problems putting in the back of the net. Wake Forest has put together 98 goals in the past two years, all because of waves of talented attackers. Coach Muse got him another one with sophomore from Middlesbrough, England, Calvin Harris. Check this out as he moves right outside of the 18, puts a butte in the back of the net. Calvin Harris had one goal, one assist, and a 3-1 win at Louisville last Friday night, earning him co-offensive player of the week. Kyle, you ready? Let's do it. I'm ready. Opening kick, minutes away. Welcome back to Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Here on the campus of Lake Forest is the lineup for NC State, the 4-4-2. Coach Kiefer did this versus Duke. You see Palisine and Kropp, who's back in the net. Yeah, the redshirt junior from Germany missed all last season with a knee injury. He's back. Well, Wake Forest with a 4-3-3. Cho on the left, Harris on the right. The offensive player of the week, Swallin. That's the guy to look for because he's somewhat going to take the place or try to take the place of Bruto Lapa. Yeah, we talked with head coach Bobby Muse before the game, and, and that is an impossible job, <laughs> Ty, is replacing the, the leader of the last few years, Bruno Lapa, in the attack. Jake Swallen will try to pull the strings there just behind the front three, but it is a tall task indeed for the redshirt sophomore. He's got the talent, just has to put it together in every single game consistently. Ty Collins alongside Kyle Baum. It's a pleasure to have you guys spend your Saturday evening with us. This rivalry just really goes all the way back to, like we said, 1980, but even further than that, 1979, because Wake Forest was fielding a club team. This is the 46th meeting of all time. Wake Forest, of course, leads the series 29-11-5. And, and look at that, Kyle. Last time State came in here and beat Wake Forest was 1993. That is a long time, right? It certainly is, and Wake's won five in a row in this series as well. So uh, the Demon Deacons certainly know success against the Wolfpack on both ends. 13-0-3 in the last 15 meetings. And Forrest has the advantage over the, the rival Wake, the Wolfpack of NC State. And you can see the Deeks pressing here early. Would not be shocked to see a lot more of that. This NC State team does not like to play in possession. They're a very direct team. The Wolfpack don't hold possession a lot. So watch for the, the uh, Demon Deacons to really press hard. They call it a counter press when you lose the ball and immediately swarm the player who... Uh, received it for the opponent, so I would not be surprised to see head coach Bobby Muse go with that. This Wolfpack team really struggles up front. They like to go direct, uh, but they are incredibly compact at the back. The Deeks are going to have to be really, really diligent in the attack and patient and not get frustrated when attacks don't go their way. Coach Muse also makes a change in the lineup, too. We failed to mention when we showed the lineup. Escarado will be replacing. Jose Kojima. Kojima played that spot versus Louisville, and there is Escobado, the freshman out of Frisco, Texas. Yeah, a pair of freshmen there as Coach Muse looking for somebody to replace the captain, Alistair Johnson. Played up in the middle. Parente tries to connect with Calvin Harris. 
You know, we talk about replacing Bruno Lapa, obviously replacing his talent next to impossible, but replacing the leadership of Alistair Johnson and his grittiness and gutted, guttiness there in, at the right back position, also next to impossible. Obviously, you know, this team loves to reload talent every single year, but replacing those personalities is a tall task no matter what. Yeah, you're also replacing Joey Desart too with Orlando. As Wake Forest now moves to the attacking third. You mentioned Escribano. He's here all alone here on the, the bottom of your screen and likely, no, they go back instead. But you saw Escribano bombing forward there early to overlap on that right side with Calvin Harris. Garrison Tubbs, who steps in for the injured Michael DeShield, who got injured in that exhibition game versus Pittsburgh. We wish him all the best when we get back on the pitch for the Deeks. And that's a, another big hole to fill, Kyle, because he has been the stalwart. He's preseason ACC watch list player. And now you put a freshman back there with Garrison Tubbs. As a foul called on Wake Forest. And we got a Wolfpack player down. And it's Palacin. Palacin, the freshman out of Spain. Very tall target. He's 6'4". We talked about Wake Forest replacing players. NC State also trying to replace David Laura, uh, who's their leading point getter and joint leading scorer last year up front and that is Pallison's job here as a freshman to replace that main target man. Yeah, he's, a, he's a tough player to replace. He's down also in Orlando City. Interesting story about him. When he weighed his options, Coach Kiefer said, you know what, if it's my kid, I think this is the best for him to go to the MLS. And he got behind him, except one thing. His mother said he has to earn his degree. So right now, Lorera is finishing up at NC State while playing in the MLS. That's pretty impressive. That is impressive, although COVID makes the you know distance learning a little bit more normal. So it's not really been a beneficial to too many people, but in that circumstance, maybe a little bit beneficial for someone who's trying to learn from far away. There's Coach Kiefer. Coach Kiefer and Bobby Muse, very close. He used to be roommates. He used to be office mates, too, on his fourth season. And he's done nothing but put Wolfpack in the conversation. They finished their best spot since 2005 last season. They've been to the tournament every year, and he's been on the sideline. And you see Kyle State doing a really good job just slowing down, trying to keep Wake Forest from getting into that counterattack. which you kind of talked about earlier, just because the way that they're built defensively. Not really seeing too much press either, though, Kyle. No, not a ton of press, which we I thought we might early. Uh, but so far, they've allowed NC State to try and build, which they may also do, too, because, as we mentioned before, the Wolfpack like to play very direct, so Wake may just force them to play more fluid, something that they're not terribly used to. Batista painted in a corner, trying to play Swallow. Kyle Holcomb gets the nod up top. Remember what he did in the NCAA tournament? Very impressive. Three goals in the first two matches of that tournament. Maryland and Michigan. Two versus Michigan, one versus Maryland. He had to step up. Wake Forest is missing a lot of attackers, and yet they have a lot of attackers available. There's Coach Buse in his sixth season. 90 wins for him. 90 wins. That's just 16 losses only in his, in his five years at Wake Forest. He brings in a top 10 recruiting class once again here to Winston-Salem. Little big ball to the left for Kyle Holcomb. Harris is there for a ball, but they'll go out of bounds off Kyle Holcomb and a goal kick awarded to NC State. There's Ivy Brisma. Did not start versus 
Duke, but he gets the nod tonight. The junior from the Philadelphia Union Academy. Last year had one goal, two assists, and 18 starts. And Lake Forest still backing off the press. The out of bounds from Aiden Foster. Foster there at the left back position has a really good relationship with Alex Batista there on the left flank. The two of them overlap constantly, almost to the point where it's hard to know which one's playing left back and which one's playing left wing. But for the most part, Foster back there at left back. He struggled a little bit here against the uh, the combo of Machope Chol and, and Christian Escribano early. Aiden Foster moved from forward to a midfield position and then some done like right today. He's playing tonight, playing in the back. But usually he was up top. The junior from Cary, North Carolina. And another stop here as Wake Forest will get ready for a set piece. Garrison Tubbs at 6-3 is inside the box. Here's a lofty ball and just out of the reach of Tubbs. They're signaling for a corner kick and it will be a corner kick. I think Ben Alcazar actually got up for this as well. Perfectly placed towards the far post. Just glancing off the head. Of that. That's uh very, very close. Pedro Grosso. Off the tips of his hair. Goes out of bounds. It'll be another corner kick. It's a little too deep on that effort from Wake. Looking good early on the stoppages, though. Set piece is something they've struggled to defend so far this year. All three goals the two from the exhibition and then the one from the opener have come on set pieces. That'll be very, very important here today, Ty, as NC State is very good playing that direct kind of play in creating chances from set pieces and then delivering on them. Welcome weights back. Now we'll put a little bit of pressure on the back line of Pedregosa. Big ball out of bounds off Rula. And NC State will take the throw in. Selected to finish fourth in the South. Their last upset against number one came two years ago when they defeated the Tar Heels and Dale Stadium. Tonight they're faced with a number one Wake Forest, Demon Deacons. You mentioned it, Ty, a lot of possession for NC State so far. It has not looked like they have even come close to making Wake look uncomfortable so far. Chol. Took the play it ahead, used his support, and a turnover. Well played by Batista. Beautiful tackle there from Garrison Tubbs. Chol left it a little bit short, trying to send it back. And Tubbs there to the rescue, or else there was a lot of space to send a ball into the box. Great look for the freshman there, who has looked confident in center back, replacing Michael DeShields. Another player from Atlanta United Academy, which is where Machoke Cho comes from. Push on the back. Kyle Holcomb towards Wake Forest with a free kick. Pedragosa doesn't agree. Forest wants to switch fields. Not exactly the right ball they want to play as NC State gets possession back. Beautiful. Played seven minutes and already that many fouls. Well played ball on the right side and kind of ran out of real estate. NC State starting to turn the screw. I mentioned earlier just a couple minutes ago that it hadn't looked like they were threatening the Wake Forest back line too much. Nice little chip to the right side, down the edge, just over the top of the crossbar. Yeah, Clark Oops. Ross, the transfer from Appalachian State. You remember Appalachian State disbanded their program the spring of 2020. It's a shame because that program was established in 1962. They had a lot of success in the 70s. Head coach Jason O'Keefe 
had that program headed in the right direction, and unfortunately, they had to disband. And Jason O'Keefe actually was here at Wake Forest from 03 to 05, put together some stellar recruiting classes. They've got a pair of guys from that App State team on this NC State uh, team. Hernandez is the other one, Alex yep. Hernandez. He started their opener, has begun this game on the bench. Control plays Escribano versus support. Wake Forest moves it around the back. Perretze this year's captain. Swallen. And Scholl with his hand up. Scholl inside the 18. Crossover or a step over. As he is so dangerous. That is fabulous defending, though, there by Aiden Foster as Chol really was one-on-one. -on -one. He got the ball from Swallen, a great delivery. Chol maybe would have wanted to move, cut to the inside if he could take another look at this one and, and do it over. But Foster did a wonderful, wonderful job there of blocking Chol off without taking him down and then drawing the foul. That That is stellar defending. That's also a lot of film work because... As we all know, those who've watched Wake Forest soccer, when Scholl gets down there, he is pretty dangerous. That is his comfort zone. And he's making a run right at that byline. Yeah, he loves to take it up the, the side, too, and then cut a, a tight angle shot in towards the far post, and it looked like Foster knew it was coming. Scholl already has one goal and scored the first five minutes into that Louisville match. Led the team with four shots that evening. Third team all ACC. Very exciting player to watch. Just played 15 minutes, Kyle, and I don't know, it's uh, we expect a little bit more so far, but we're just kind of feeling each other out, right? Yeah, and you know, talking to head coach Bobby Muse before this game, something that he mentioned was whichever team can play its game is going to win. And I think you can see the the imprint of that so far in this game. Wake Forest just doesn't want to let NC State play its direct game. They're happy to let State free flow and build forward because they're not so good in the half court, if you will. But they just don't want to let State bomb the ball forward. Mitchell with a heavy touch there. The winning is active, Coach. There's one of them right there. Bobby Muse, winning per percentage of 6'6", 16th ranked. And then his buddy, George Kiefer, 32nd. But Coach Muse has 16 losses in five years. And check this out. 90 wins in his only 115 matches since he's got to Wake Forest. That's is that a, good? That's a win rate about 82%. <laughs> you know, he, and Kyle, his worst season as far as losses was last year. They ended up in the College Cup. It's amazing how that works. Escrivano. I set his skill there. We'll play Chol as he moves back. Bobby Muse so focused on building a culture, too, right? We Talking to him, he was so bummed about how things have been with COVID because he's just not able to build that culture that he loves to build here at Wake Forest. Building here is Harris to Joel. Joel moves it to his left foot, tries to put a rip. Parente sees Escrivano backing up, but will play Suzuki. Looked like Harrison got a little shove, wanted the call, but the referee says play on. Yeah, and I think that was the right call. I think Harris was a little bit looking for the foul there, but excellent defending so far from this NC State team. That's what we expected. Wake going a little more direct now. Kyle Holcomb, the full sprint. Plays Swallen, Swallen right back behind oh. the boot of Calvin Harris. Jake Swallen's got to be a little more selfish in that spot. I think he had the angle for a shot. Instead tried to lay it off. I understand the mentality of wanting to be an attacking midfielder and, and really play your teammates in, but he had an opening there. And I, I think that's maybe one of the best chances of the game so far. Just he'll he'll want to have that one back. He's usually a, a 
pass first, then shoot player. So because of that, I think he was looking to pass and not be selfish, but he'll look at the tape and say, I should have just tried one on frame. 0-0 our score here in Winston-Salem. Under 27 to go in the first half. Parente got stepped on. NC State will play it in the middle of the circle. That's Azamani. Part of the ACC watch list. The transfer from Monroe College. Coach Kiefer has a nice little pipeline there. Blake is seven straight wins in ACC openers. Probably shouldn't be surprised by the success that they've had of recent years. That's just what we talked about before, culture. If you can get going right off the, the jump from a season, it's because you have a culture built and guys are, are already familiar with each other. Escribano. But a miscommunication with Swallen. Want him to make that run. Swallen wasn't on the same page. And it'll be a goal kick for NC State with Croft. Croft who's back in the lineup after getting injured last year. Yeah, brutal knee injury just 54 minutes into the season. Flick on to Kyle Holcomb. Holcomb with a shot and off the shin of Croft. Harris trying to corral it, goes down, and the whistle blown, and yet another foul. Kyle, four fouls so far. We've had a lot. Right now, we're looking at nine between both of them. That's a good job by Calvin Harris there. He knew that the situation he was in here first, we take a look at this shot. Kyle Holcomb maybe will want to go a little bit more towards the far post next time. That was the opening, but... Uh, a, a good opportunity here on the run. That's what Wake Forest will look for. Nothing bad can happen from a shot on target. And and certainly Wake getting one in there. And now Harris with his back to goal in not really a dangerous position. Looking for the foul, sure, but it was a foul nonetheless. And here's Swallen over the ball. Here's the free kick. Oh, what a rip, but just off to the left. <laughs> Goodness, that had some pace. That was just the one instance here where us <laughs> with the difficult shot here, I thought that was in for a moment just <laughs> a little wide of the post. Excellent effort by Swallen. So now again, we'll have to go back and that last look. Maybe he should have taken a rip because he <laughs> does have a good boot. That is the Bruno Lapa roll there, taking free kicks and, and putting them nearly on frame. Charisma. State will play it back. They tried to move it up forward. And we'll work it around the back, move to the left side of the pitch. Batista, Batista had a very good chance in that game versus Duke. Came awfully close. And Near stick run. So many chances NC State had to put Duke away and just couldn't do it. Couldn't score. As Monty to the left side. Batista. And now it's Foster. Foster lifts it. Panaberg has no problems with that. It's interesting, Wake Forest has really let NC State build from the back, and they look relatively comfortable doing so, just haven't had it in the final third yet. But we have not seen that direct play that we expected to see from the Wolfpack so far. Instead, they're happy to send it back to the center backs and reset and flow forward, just like they're doing here. NC State will just allow the time that Wake Forest has allowed them to move it around the back and then Krop sends a long one into the circle. It's interesting watching Krop talk about recovering from an ACL tear and that serious knee injury that he had. He said, I, I, as soon as I went down, I knew it was bad. 
and he said, I, I, I got my head around the fact that I wasn't going to be there for a while. And I said, for the next year, I am not a collegiate soccer athlete. I am a collegiate rehab athlete. And that's such a good mentality to have when you're trying to come back from a long-term injury because it really can be uh, brutal to the mindset of wanting to be out there. A year is such a long time to be off the field. And, and really, when you think about it, okay, for the next year, I am a rehab athlete. And if you can wrap your head around that, it certainly helps the mentality. Harris looked up and checked on Kropp. Put a chance on, but not much contact there as it skids out of bounds. Yeah, Kropp is a 1.15 goal against average, which is sixth best single season. That was in 2018 in program history. His 1.09 career goal against average marks it ranks best in program history. So, yes, I, I, Kiefer was very happy to have him back. Yeah, he's been a starter since his freshman year, coming from the FC Nuremberg Academy in Germany and was also a German U16 international. And anytime you get a look in the German national team at any level, clearly a talented player. State trying the right channel too much on that pass. It tubs. We'll just clear it. Zuki to Parente. Parente up ahead to Chol, but cut out by Foster. Foster goes down. Holcomb not believing that fall. It'll be a free kick for NC State. About 20 minutes left to go in the first half. Nil-nil our score here at Spry Stadium. Lake Forest has had the best chance so far. Racing on the right side past Rula is Brisman. Rula going for the long ball and not connecting. That's a couple long balls Wake Forest has tried. And right to the boot of a red jersey. Samani plays deep. Yeah, he's almost dropping in as a third center back, and this is something we thought we might see from this NC State team is a three at the back system. Holcomb to Cho. Cho has Holcomb making a run, steady, patiently waiting. Calvin Harris went down in the middle of that play. Hope he's all right. Pressure on Pedragosa by Kyle Holcomb. Back to what this NC State team can do at the back. They are a tactically flexible team to be able to play that three at the back system. It's a very flexible three at the back or five at the back tactical setup. It ends up being five at the back defensively and then three in attack. And it really speaks to the amount of running that fullbacks can do in the modern game because to play that three at the back system, you need to be able to have them come back on defense and then head all the way up the pitch and provide support on the wings. You ask a lot of your fullbacks, but this team that has fullbacks that bomb forward anyways in uh, Parker Cross and, and Eden Foster, they can do it. Try the long ball, good touch by Calvin Harris. Calvin Harris says he wants to make that quicker. As Calvin Harris was called offside. Set by NC State. Rizmo making a run down the right Beautiful flank. Beautiful ball. Almost got there. What a pass. Alcazar made his mark versus Louisville. Did an outstanding job. And that back line behind, without his friend Michael DeShields. And you know, he still asks Michael DeShields for tips. Though he's hurt, but he'll call him up, chat with him. And 
Michael be glad to give him any kind of tips. <laughs> Well, you don't see that very often. The offside flag called on a player who receives the ball 15 yards on his own half of the pitch. It looks like Alex Batista was called for being offside and then coming all the way back a good 30 yards to receive that boot from the goalkeeper. Another Wake Forest player down. Coach Muse had his arms up. And NC State on the attack. Rula, slide tackle. It'll go out of bounds for a throw in for the pack. It's weird to say this in a game where 11 fouls have been called, but it does seem like a little bit has let been let go already in this game. Uh, get an early caution here, maybe, it looks like for. Yeah, Powell gets, Policing gets a card, the first card of the match. This is what had Coach Muse with his hands up. A little shove in the back. Suzuki goes down. Looks like the referee played advantage in that play, which is why the game wasn't stopped, although it's kind of odd that he played advantage given that that next pass was given away. Hernandez checks in for the first time tonight. The App State transfer. He led the Mountaineers in scoring in 2019 with five goals. And I asked Coach Kiefer about his Mountaineer players, and he said, those kids can play. I'm glad they could come and join us here in Raleigh. And good to see them continue their careers, too, despite the fact that the program shut down. Never want to see a career cut short like that. It's Mahdi to Foster. Swallow can't turn. And a free kick awarded to Wake Forest. Look, it's on Pedregosa. This NC State team seems a little jittery when they lose possession in midfield, and it's led to a whole lot of fouling. Seven fouls now on the Wolfpack, and almost all of them have been here in this midfield third, and yet another one. I think the referee's going to talk to Pedregosa here and give him a warning because his foul count is rising, and, and he can give a card for excessive fouling. And the referee says that's, yeah, two, that's, two, that's right. two warnings <laughs> or two fouls in the last 15 seconds. And, and he, I, I, he did the, the signal for, hey, this is your last warning. The next one's a card. Big Forest back line creeped up. Tubbs will retreat. Still scoreless here in Winston-Salem. Number one Wake Forest. Taking on the Wolfpack of NC State. Swallow now in the middle oh. of the pitch. Oh, the delivery was there to Holcomb. Holcomb with his hands up. He wants it. Harris cuts back into the middle. And again, another miscommunication or a heavy touch. Not sure, but Parente wanted to play Rula. Jake Swallen has shown moments here in this game of, of really building into that attacking midfield role, but he's also been a little bit slow on the trigger. If he had pulled the trigger there on that ball through to Kyle Holcomb, Holcomb was leaning, trying to stay on side, but clearly had an opening and had his defender beat. Just feel free to thread that ball on through. It's there. No urgency, though, for NC State on these. These set pieces, though, Kyle, seems like they want to not allow Wake Forest to hit the ground running. As for it saying, plenty of space. Joel had Escribano making an overlapping run. We've seen Escribano make a number of overlaps there so far down the right flank, but it looks so far, at least through the first half here, to be a decoy tactically because they have not sent it to him up the line. And when that happens that many times, you wonder if that's a, a tactical instruction to send him high up the pitch and then cut further into the middle with the ball. Coach Muse has about three players getting ready to check in. As soon as they are allowed to. Foul on Wake Forest. So yet another free kick. There's Parker Cross. No 
also from Cary, North Carolina. Foul count to 15, eight for NC State, seven for Wake Forest. Seals. Now it's just Monty. Foster wanted it. But as Monty plays the simple ball. Foster, I believe, somehow keeps that in. Subs make a one touch pass to Pannenberg. Suzuki may be able to turn. Holcomb wanted it back. Scholl says, I'll play it back. up against three Wolfpack players, hits the ground, and a free kick for the Deeks. This NC State defense has so far played Hacka Harris here in the first <laughs> half. He has gone down a number of times with his back to goal, too. And, and, you know, that's not somewhere that NC State wants to be fouling guys this far away from the net. They, they close down nicely with the double team. He shields them off, then moves away from the, the net. And and you see they're in midfield. Asamani just cuts him down. And that's a great job by Harris, but it's also you know a, a, a bit of a lapse in concentration by Asamani because that is not a place you want to be fouling a guy. Free kick by Perante. And Schull. Plays Escribano. Forest engineering some attack here. Looking for the Knights' first goal. Here's Joel. Joel not having any options available. State has done a good job, Kyle, of not allowing Wake Forest with that A option and pushing them to go to the C option, the safety option. Yeah, they're Wake is clearly trying to play from the flanks, and they just have no room there. Holcomb with a ride and a goal. The first goal of the match. And about 10 minutes to go, Kyle Holcomb. Puts the Deeks up 1-0. It really just created something out of nothing there. The, the NC State back line looked completely settled in that move, and Holcomb touched one foot, other foot, and created space for himself, and then fired in with the left. What a beautiful job by Kyle Holcomb. Bobby Muse told us before the game, he said, Kyle's on fire. If he can really get it going, he could be a leader for us in the attack. And right here, this is creating something out of nothing. Just one foot. It's actually the right. He cut it into the left edge of the goal and, and hands on the head there. Surrender Cobra for the NC State defense. And so Kyle Holcomb actually look up to play the pass first. He said he didn't have it. He said, all right, well, I'll take a touch and give it a chance myself. And it's his second goal of the 2020 season. He scored against Louisville on a PK. So Kyle Holcomb picking up where he left off in the tournament. He had to step up. And Wake Forest had the word that they were going to be without some of their attackers. Kyle Holcomb usually come, come off the bench. But he started in the tournament. And he let everybody know who he was. Three goals in the first two games. Garcia in, Sagiv out for the pack. Yeah, and we were just talking about how the Wolf Pack have done a great job of, of keeping Wake Forest locked in on the flanks and forcing them into the middle where it's a lot more compact. 
and, and it had worked so far for NC State, but right there, you have a player as talented as Kyle Holcomb who can create space on his own. He takes the feed a good five yards outside the top of the box and just makes something out of nothing. There's no defending that. You know, tactically, it had worked so far for NC State, locking down the flanks, forcing Wake Forest into the more crowded middle of the area. And there, Wake able to build on its own. Wake Forest again with a, another wave of attackers. It's Chase Oliver and Oscar Sears. Both freshmen are this top 10 recruiting class. Sears from Stockholm, Sweden. And Chase Oliver who had an outstanding game, an exhibition game versus Pitt. He had a brace, and his second goal was probably worthy of a Sports Center top 10. And Al Kisar. Wake leading 1 0 with a goal by Kyle Holcomb. About 9.38 to go. Now we sit at about 7.5 to go until halftime. Delighted you are with us here on this Saturday evening. The in-state derby between the Wolfpack and the Deacons. Kyle Vaughn beside me. I'm Ty Collins. Extremely excited to be broadcasting soccer here in 2020. Amen to that. It is just so, so great to be back. It's been a long summer and and we're glad to be back on the mic. Absolutely. Chase Oliver tried to get cheeky. Got upended, looked for a call. The referee said, I'm not going to have any of that. Play on. Speaks to the kind of program that head coach Bobby Muse has built, that a guy like Chase Oliver decides to come to Wake Forest. He had offers from Clemson, Duke, Notre Dame, Louisville, and Kentucky. That is the <laughs> that is the gamut of top ACC and beyond programs here this side of the Mississippi. And for him to decide to come to Wake Forest is, is, speaks to what Bobby Muse has built. Six minutes in, or excuse me, six minutes left, and NC State has yet to have a shot. Six shots for Wake Forest, zero for the Wolfpack. Yeah, the shot count is really speaks to how much this attack for the Wolfpack has struggled over the last year or so. Last season, they managed 213 shots, which was 10th out of 12 in the ACC. And you look at how many they allowed, it's just 168. So that speaks to how defensively sound this NC State team is to, to go 45 less than that. But, you know, last week, the season opener against Duke, one shot on goal, eight total in a double overtime game. That is not what you're looking for up front. And shut out for the first time in the first game this year after being shut out six times all of last year. Uh, a very disjointed NC State attack. Definitely a defensive first team. Cut up by Harris. Harris will play a Holcomb. Holcomb still inside the 18. It's Chase Oliver this time. And it's cleared away by Jamie Smith. Jamie Smith, the son of... I knew you were ready for this one, right? Aston <laughs> Villa manager Dean Smith. Pretty cool yeah, that is. to have that kind of connection here in North Carolina. He has a friendly rival connection with his teammate Brad Sweeney, um, who is in the West Brom Academy. Yeah, that Birmingham rivalry there. <laughs> Came over from Limestone College in Gaffney, South Carolina. Omar Hernandez now checks in for Calvin Harris. And the wave continues, Kyle, because Omar Hernandez was Gatorade National Player of the Year two years ago. Yeah, and we saw flashes of how good he can be last year. Didn't get a ton of playing time, but when he was in, he made things happen. Another product of that Atlanta United Academy where they have serious connections here at Wake Forest. Michael Parkhurst, who just retired, famous alum from Wake Forest, 
the 2007 championship. Sears, a heavy touch there, a heavy pass. Here comes Hernandez. Hernandez loses his footing. Now Wake Forest back with possession. Three and a half to go in the first half. And you could see on that NC State attack why they've really struggled to create openings. There was space for Batista on the left. They just never saw him. Up ahead to Rula, deflected. It's Chase Oliver. Interesting that Oliver has switched flanks now. He was on the right after coming in and now taking a place there on the left. Versatility of this team, left to right, you can see it often, even with the starters, Chole and Harris are occasionally able to switch sides. Nice one-touch passing by Hernandez to Escribano. Solid move by Tubbs. He gets up ended and he is holding his shin. And hopefully he's okay, but he put a nice move on to move up the field. Yeah, that looks a painful one. And it's the second card of the night. This time it's to Batista. Maybe we'll get another look at it, but Beautiful display of skill, especially for a freshman. Kyle, take a look. Yeah, just stamped right on his shin coming through. Definitely not intentional. His boots were low enough that it's, you know, there's no chance of a sending off there, but he goes over the ball. That's always a dangerous moment. Definitely deserved a yellow card. Yeah, I think that's, those studs were up. If you go any higher with those stubs up the shin, the studs up the shin, then there's definitely a chance for a referee to say, "Hey, that's enough for you tonight." <laughs> but right, that's the right move. Hopefully, Garrison can shake that off. Mike Forrest selects to go the short ball, leading one nil. The goal from Kyle Holcomb. Whistle blown and a free kick awarded to the Wolfpack. NC State finally has put a shot on the shot sheet. They actually did outshoot Duke five to two in the second half of that double overtime game. Heavy touch into the middle, cut out. By Azamani. Tripped up. Oh. Is it outside of the box or inside the box? They call a PK. Yeah, and that's the right call. It's just really, really unfortunate placement for Wake Forest here because you're just inside the top corner of the box. Jelani Forbes here uh, penalized. And, and I mean, he's, there's no threat on goal right there, trying to play up the flank. I, I know Wake's going to argue that it was outside the area, but I think this is the right call right inside the top corner of the box. It's just unfortunate luck here. Just if the contact may have started outside the box, but you get another look here. Yeah, oh man, that's close. I, I thought it was a lot definite, a lot more definitely in the, the top corner, but on replay, it's a lot closer than I thought. I still think it's the right call. Chance for NC State to put their first goal of 2020 and tie this match at one apiece. It's A.J. Seals, the sophomore. It's saved by Pannenberg. Pannenberg off the deflection, and NC State makes it one-to-one. -one. Just a series of unfortunate events here for Wake Forest because first off, you know, just really, really poor luck on the foul just inside the top of the box. Not a threat on goal. NC State gets a penalty chance anyways. Pannenberg guesses right. That was not a great effort from the spot, but on the rebound, Batista is able to put it in as Pandenberg parries and then inside the near post. NC State can consider themselves a bit fortunate here to be level. Yeah, Pandenberg did an outstanding job. It's just you have to make sure 
And you're right at the 18 to follow everybody through in case of that exact situation. And it's 1-1 here at Spry. Batista off the rebound with the equalizer. And I think, you know, it, with just a minute and a half to go before the half, Wake will put a, one or two more attacking opportunities here on net. And then if it stays 1-1, you go into the halftime break. And if you're head coach Bobby Muse, you go, hey, shake it off. Unlucky. We're still level. We're still the better attacking team through the first, first half. Uh, I, I don't think this will phase this Deacons team too much. One minute. One minute remains. Little halftime. Squared at one apiece. A foul by Forbes. Gave the NC State Wolfpack a PK. And then Seals could not execute. Pannenberg made a nice save. The rebound was by Batista. And it was no doubt that was going to be the equalizer. This is an interesting moment here for, for Wake Forest because the clock has stopped for the injury and they'll get a, a restart to try and put something together. Jamie Smith able to shake it off, that's good. But uh, Wake has an, an opportunity here to put something together with a couple seconds to go. Not exactly plenty of time the way this offense can move. 30 seconds. Ferrense looks up. Here's Hernandez. Clock down to 15. Sears tried to get creative. And couldn't link up with Parente. And that will be all she wrote in the first half. Wake Forest gets a goal by Kyle Holcomb with about 10 minutes left to go. And then when things looked like it was going to end 1-0 into the break, NC State gets a PK and rebounds and gets the equalizer. We're knotted up at what a piece here in Winston-Salem. And we're back for the halftime report. Our score here in Winston-Salem, 1-2-1. Lake Forest started things off with a goal by Kyle Holcomb and then NC State with the equalizer. Hey, look, Kyle, he just started off a little late, but, you know, we're playing soccer. We already got a poll out at Wake Forest at number one. Check these out. Virginia, excuse me, Virginia at number one. Uh, Pitt at two. This is the North region. And then Virginia Tech at three. Virginia and Virginia Tech were supposed to play tonight. That has been postponed. Notre Dame, six. I tell you, Notre Dame started off real pretty and then just kind of fell back losing to Louisville and then they also lost to Pitt but Virginia I know they lost DK but they still got a lot of talent let's take a look at the south Clemson at number one in the south region Wake Forest at number two and Wake Forest is the number one team in the country yeah those two teams are going to go at it you've got Kamarni Smith in there to take over for Robbie Robinson at Clemson that'll be fascinating to see how that attack if it can produce at the extremely high levels they did last year at Clemson beat South Carolina 3-0 uh, tonight uh, North Carolina at number three and this is kind of how they're projected to finish with Clemson on top of Wake Forest. I'm sure Wake Forest will have something to say about that. And you know what? They'll be able to discuss this on the field because they will get a home and a home game uh, first in Clemson and then back here in Winston-Salem. So they will settle that on the pitch. Last year, Wake Forest beat Clemson in overtime. Kyle, you were there for that game. That was fun. That was a fabulous back and forth game. We should see that pretty much all season long from those two again. And let's take a look how this season will play out. There are 11 teams participating this season. Remember, Boston College will not be playing. Those are six conference games, the three home and away. Don't forget you get two teams that you will play home and home, 
Wake Forest gets Clemson and NC State. NC State gets Duke and Wake Forest. Uh, and, of course, the top eight teams of the two divisions, top four, will advance to the NC or the ACC tournament. That will begin November 15th at the Wake Mid Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina. So putting a little small condensed schedule, but, heck, we get ACC soccer. That's the thing of a beauty, right? We'll be back to Winston-Salem. Our score, 1-1. One, one. It's a beautiful October night here in the Tri-N. As in-state rival is knotted up at one apiece. Wake Forest and NC State. Kyle, uh, thought maybe we'd see a little bit more scoring, but I tell you, we... We saw who we thought would score, and that was Kyle Holcomb. Let's take a look at the highlights. Yeah, Kyle Holcomb here netting for Wake Forest, and they really deserve this goal. They were great in the attack. He wanted to pass there, as you know, to tie during play, but then when he wasn't there, he just tucks his head down, bulldozes through, and rifles in that right-footed shot, perfectly placed inside that left post. Then, you know, the events right before the end of the half, uh, really unfortunate here for Wake Forest, just clipping the ankles of Alex Hernandez. And then the penalty there, Pannenberg read it well. We always say a goalkeeper guesses right, but he really read that well. Not a great penalty. It was telegraphed to the left. And then I think it's harsh to put that rebound on Pannenberg. But looking at it again, I'm sure Pannenberg would tell you that near post effort, you always want to cover your near post as a goalkeeper. He'll tell you it was his <laughs> fault. I'm not sure we're ready to put that on him, but uh, certainly Pannenberg would say so. It took a while for NC State to get a shot, but they have now three. Wake Forest was six. Now, to, to caveat that real yeah. quick there, Ty, three shots on the, the, the book. The, you know, you can't argue with that. But two of them are from that one penalty yeah, play. So really just one shot from open play. You've got the penalty counts as a shot and then the rebound as well. And those fouls are really, really been the highlights of this first half because a lot of chippiness, 19 total fouls, 10 for Wake Forest, 9 on NC State, and only one corner, which is surprising just the way that Wake Forest attacks. And we're tied at 1-1. We've got more with the second half coming up. It's halftime, uh, moments away until the second half. Tied one to one, Wake Forest and NC State. Wake Forest the number one team. Wake Forest having some holes to fill because they had a lot of talent go to the next level with Alistair Johnston uh, leading the way and Joey Desart. And NC State also had David Lorera going down to Orlando. Let's take a look, Kyle, of all the ACC players that are on to the next level in the MLS. That's a total of 50. That's hard to imagine, right? Yeah, that's had some serious talent <laughs> from the ACC moving on to the next level. Uh, good to see Syracuse up that list, too. They've really produced a lot of talent as well over the last couple of years, but Wake Forest just really leading the way, especially from last year's team. Yeah, it's become somewhat of a factory. Look at all the Demon Deacons in the MLS. There's Joey Desart in Orlando City SC. Of course, Mark McKenzie. Who there's rumors of him maybe going to Celtic Elf FC. It's one of my favorite clubs, so I don't know if he'll make his way across the pond. Chris Duvall and Portland and Cervania and Tumasi, both in Dallas. Of course, when you talk about pros, you cannot leave off someone that's not in the MLS. But they are in the EPL with Leeds United. It's Jack Harrison. Harrison. What a player, man. Yeah, he's been so important to that Leeds United team. He's even producing to the point where uh, Man City might welcome him back with open arms as he's on loan right now. But uh, And he wasn't able to play today in Leeds' game against Manchester, or Manchester City. But uh, I think, you know, he's just been so fantastic in, in the Premier League and had a great uh, story to watch. A uh, lot of talent, though, in MLS. Uh, great to see Alistair Johnson getting a run in that Nashville SC first team. Uh, yeah. He's really producing for them at right back. Well, let me go back to Jack Harrison because go to their opener, and he scores a goal against his former college coach's favorite club versus Liverpool. And the first thing I do is send a tweet to Coach Muse saying, how does that feel? And he said he's getting – he still had chill bumps. You know, you're watching your favorite club, Liverpool, and then the kid that you watched and coached run up the sideline in the old golden black is putting a goal in 
against your team. I mean, that's got to be amazing, right? It's It's got to be such a wild feeling. And at that point, your fanhood goes out the window because you root for people first. And, and I, I, you know, it's just such a wonderful, wonderful thing for Bobby Muse to have produced that kind of a talent on that big of a stage. Yeah, I don't know when the last time an ACC player scored an EPL goal. I think maybe Claudia Reyna would be the last one. Yeah. We we're tied with no seven. Let's take a look at the ACC scoreboard. Clemson. Big win over South Carolina, that in-state derby. Notre Dame loses to Louisville 2-1. to one. They've dropped two in a row. They lost to Pitt earlier in North Carolina. And that rivalry beats Duke on Friday. Of course, we mentioned about Virginia and Virginia Tech being postponed to October 14th. Clemson will be headed here. And on the, well, excuse me, they'll be, Wake Forest will head down to Clemson on the 13th, and then they'll be back up here on October 30th. And NC State, after they finish up here, they will again face Duke on the 9th. They've played Carolina an exhibition game, played Duke to start things off. They play at Wake. Finally, they go home and take Wake again. And then they'll have Navy. Of course, Wake Forest's next game, next game after this one will be against UAB on Saturday night. The Wake Forest will be playing an out-of-conference game. But NC State in will the, the Wake Forest Demon Deacons tied it 1-1. There's Michael DeShields after that scary injury versus Pitt. Uh, it really had a lot of Wake Forest Demon Deacons fans worried about Michael DeShields, the captain. In fact, the entire team went over to the corner, had a small prayer for him uh, because they were just so very worried. And, and it's good news to see him up and walking. Uh, we hope to see him soon. There's the fall championships, Kyle. They've been moved to the spring uh, because of COVID. 36 teams, 12 at large bids. That College Cup will be May 13th to the 17th, which I really, really like that. And maybe we'll talk about this a little later because you know why. It's because, actually, you know what? Let's talk about it now. Because it is very similar to the very popular 21st century model. This is a model that teams would start camp in late August with games starting in September. They'll break for the holidays. Then they start camp up again in January. Games would resume in mid-March. And then they'd have the College Cup in early June. I tell you. If you can get a college cup in June in that beautiful temperature, I think that's that, that'll be great, right? Because you can have in all t sorts of host cities, and it, you would get the best product. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of support behind this at the, co the collegiate level to split it up between the fall and the spring. You, you can get guys to, to really play the way you want because you have more time to, to get them gelling uh, you, there's more space between each game so you're not really getting a lot of wear and tear on these bodies that collegiate teams have really dealt with a lot of injuries over the past few years you look at the wake team this year uh, and, and you know you lose a guy like to shields although that was more of a freak injury but then you look at the, the two injuries to Aristotle Zeris and Justin McMaster those are are more soft tissue injuries that you think okay maybe we could have prevented these with a little bit less wear and tear on bodies so, yeah, it's, it, there's a lot of support behind this at the collegiate level, and I think at some point you may see it. Swallen lays it off to Holcomb. Holcomb with the goal again. What a finish by Kyle Holcomb. Just flicks it with the outside of his foot, and he continues to sparkle here to start the season. What a piece of skill by Kyle Holcomb. His 15th goal of his career at Wake Forest. And it's about a minute in here in the second half. Wake Forest now goes on top two to one. And give Jake Swallen a lot of credit. He chased this ball down, poked it perfectly through to, to Holcomb. That first touch was brilliant yes. to continue the run down the left, and then he flicks it over the goalkeeper. Watch this Sparkling touch. bit of skill, just a little flick into the, the far side netting. That is a dazzling goal from Kyle Holcomb. Yeah, I want to see that touch even closer. That was first class as NC State goes with the deep ball. Policy. And it's off the boot of Pepe Garcia. 
Jake Swallen, you know, for, for as much of a, a up and down first half that he had, two assists to his name so far in this game on, on both goals by Holcomb. Those two linking up very well. He's He's been important here in this midfield for Wake Forest, even though, you know, it's going to take a while to quote-unquote replace Bruno Lapa if you, if you even can do that. But uh, he has certainly been important in this game. All right. Scholl goes down, got pulled by Aiden Foster. Kyle Holcomb with his second goal of the night. First in the 36th minute, second in the 46th minute. Three on his account for 2020. 15 for his career. Harris to his left, cuts it back and poked away by the NC State defense in number 12, Parker Cross. I think if there's one word, Ty, to describe that that Kyle Holcomb goal, I'm gonna I'm gonna borrow from a <laughs> a broadcast legend. Okay, go sport magisterial. <laughs> a little bit of Ray Hudson on the broadcast. Okay. Beautiful goal. I thought maybe you'd say it's a golazo, but uh, sure, it was. Uh, yeah, that works too. Yeah, okay. Magisterial. Magisterial. <laughs> Long ball to Chol. Chol maybe with a one touch and not over the head of Kropf. And that was a good sequence of events there. A long ball just with a one touch to Chol. Good vision there to see Chol behind or making the run to get behind the defense. Yeah, fabulous ball, but also a nice job by Chol. He really didn't have many options there as the goalkeeper was closing down. Just had to go for the chip and, and credit uh, Kramp for uh, uh, being aware enough to stop that that little deke. He got beat a couple minutes ago by Holcomb on it, but not beat again. There's Rula. Those long balls over the top are really working for Wake here to start the half. And Coach Bobby Muse has absolutely identified a weak point here in the NC State defense. Chol has Holcomb right there atop the six. Parente looks for him, headed away by Smith. Parente back to the left in the deflection and then cleared out by the Wolfpack. Well played to Harris. Harris with a little bender again back to Chol. Those outside attackers with Chol and Harris. Usually you'll see Chol and McMaster, but McMaster was hurt at the end of this season, of that last season part, and is healing nicely. We might see him in a couple of weeks. And Kyle, bad news for opponents. He is another dangerous, dangerous weapon. Yeah, and you know, this Wake Forest attack, even, even with the quote unquote backups in or the new guys in has been deadly. So think about how it would look with some of those talented, experienced players back in and McMaster definitely the top of the list to return this season. He crops up in big moments constantly. Parente allowed some space. And with this talented attack, Isaiah Parente is a little bit buried in the headlines. He is so important to this team and just watching his growth, great switch of play here. Watching his growth from last season to this season it has been remarkable. You know, last year he was really shy on the ball a little bit, uh, refused to, to take some of the higher risk passes, but he has really developed into a calming presence on the ball in the midfield for Wake Forest and, and so, so important to this team. He, he's very... Yeah, let's see. He's very, very important. He's actually he was MVP by his teammates. And here's that chance by Chol. That ball just kind of like a little fadeaway one touch, right? To get over the head of six foot Leon Krumpf. Yeah, and credit Krumpf too, because 
it's I think the most difficult skill as a goalkeeper is to know when to come out of net and when to stay back. It's so easy to stay back and allow players to come at you and, and credit him for coming out and challenging Chola and that really uh, uh, destroyed the chance before it had an opportunity to be a chance. Well, I think the mission right out of the locker room for head coach Muse was after giving up that PK and then the rebound to make the equalizer. I think the mission was get right out there and score an early goal. And Kyle Holcomb, he did exactly that. Yeah, mission accomplished. <laughs> he said, he did say to us last night when we talked to Coach Mews that Kyle Holcomb's been playing out of his mind. And he's been playing out of his mind for a long time. Now you can see last year when he would come off the bench, he would create chances for Wake even with 10, 15 minutes a half of, of playing time. And now that he's got the whole half to work with or the whole game to work with, uh, he is he is coming up big. And I think we're going to get a card here for uh, persistent fouling. That's the only way you really can stop Charlotte. When he makes that turn, and gets around you. The only way really is to pull him down by the jersey because look, just on a dive, just kind of swimming away. To, it's got to be frustrating for opponents to try to keep him at bay because just how he moves so well. And he's such a smart player, too, the way he, he can look in, at all different spots of the pitch to see where his teammates are running on, whether to keep it himself. Calvin. I think, I think a, lot of, a lot of these... You know, coaches and stuff look at him as a goal scorer, but really he's a distributor. That's what really he does best. Uh, I he creates agree. a lot of things. And, and you know, Calvin Harris was the target du jour in the first half, and it looks like Chole may be that here in the second half. That's the second yellow card in two games for Aiden Foster. He'll have to be a little more careful moving forward, both today and the rest of the season. Harris went down, popped right back up. Parente in the middle. Started by Pepe Garcia. Chol is a funny player too because with that lanky frame, he looks so awkward on the ball. But he, and then he all Chol, of a sudden produces. looking for a hat trick. Sorry, Kyle. It was the other Kyle that was uh, making some noise. <laughs> Kyle seems to have a good game when Kyle does the game. That's right. I, I, I like that my namesake is able to to make something happen here now. On his right foot, we saw him score the goal, cutting back onto his right in the first half. Here, another good chance. Great sliding stop to send that out for a corner, but yet another opportunity for Wake Forest. He got a good look at uh, some of the congregation. Only very few were allowed in, but if it was full capacity, let me tell you that right behind that brick wall will be plenty of people. In fact, it's tough to even get a space right there at those railings because how they packed it but because of COVID they announced on Wednesday they will be opening phase three yesterday so they are allowed to have some fans here tonight and I know the congregation was excited that they could get some people back in but I tell you that fan group and they live and die for this Wake Forest team and they are quite a good group to have as an advantage when an opponent comes into town. I mean, Wake Forest is 65-9-5 here at Spry Stadium since Muse got here in 2015. Yeah, the congregation is easily uh, a, a big part of the reason for that success. Of course, they're loud and they'll get, they'll get on the nerves of any goalkeeper right back there. Offside on Wake Forest, Calvin Harris is called behind the back line. Our score two to one, Wake Forest with the advantage. Two goals by Kyle Holcomb, one in the 36th minute and one in the 46th minute. Of course, right before halftime, NC State tied it up. A failed attempt by the PK by A.J. Seals and then followed up by Batista. Kyle Holcomb taking a leadership role there too. Saw him directing traffic a little bit up front. 
for Wake Forest, giving some instructions coming from the sideline. It's good to see Holcomb, the sophomore, taking charge there. So we have not seen, though, for NC State, not seen Brad Sweeney yet, who usually we see in red for NC State. Yeah, a bit surprised there. Sweeney had injury problems last year. He was able to make 10 appearances, but only one start. But before that, his first two seasons at NC State, he was a, a regular starter as a freshman and sophomore. And so we're surprised. I wonder if there's an injury problem there because he played the game against uh, against Duke to start the season. Suzuki will play it back to Escribato. Escribato got the nod for the start tonight. He has stayed back there on the right back position. As NC State backs away from the press. Failed attempt by Chole to cut off that pass. And here comes... Parker Cross. Garcia, one touch, Cross. Cross <laughs> with a shot and deflected out. Wonderful last ditch defending by Wake Forest. That was a massive chance for NC State. Parker Cross all alone in the box. Beautiful, it's a ball in from the right flank from Pepe Garcia, and just a wonderful opportunity there. Once again, Garrison Tubbs coming up big. That is the second time that he has come up big here in this game on a on a big chance. He had one on, on the flank where he uh, sent in a flying tackle, and now here. Batista is poaching there on the far stick. He's made some pretty nice runs for any chance or any service by NC State. Referee trying to right make sure that everybody behaves. Yep. yep. Well, I would say so after all the fouls we had in the first half. It's 2-1. NC State looking for the equalizer again. And it up. And Aiden Foster goes down. The referee was watching it all the way. And let's see what the head ref has to say about this. Yeah, there was a lot going on there in the box. NC State is, is crowding the goal mouth. And I, I'm a bit intrigued to see how he handles this. Looks like it's just going to be a talking to, but uh, I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened in there. It's hard to tell in those scrums. Yeah. We'll take a look. Yeah, just pushing and oh. shoving. And Pannenberg's trying to keep, <laughs> keep I his. I, I think he's trying to keep his sight line clear, uh, and and so Tubbs got like yanked off yeah. by his own teammate. And here's a service ball, and just out of the reach of Jamie Smith. Boy, he wishes they got that back. Smith says he didn't touch it; it deflected off a Wake Forest player. Okay, let's take a look at the first opportunity here. Batista went in almost for a diving header. I got to give him credit because that is somewhat of a hospital ball, the way he kind of put his head in there for a diving header. Yeah, and credit Escribano, too, who kept him from being able to, to get a head on it. And seals with a corner. Lake Forest trying to clear it away. She stayed inside the 18. That's Hernandez. And the Deacons will clear it. And NC State will push it back to Krupp. Longest bit of sustained pressure here from the Wolfpack tonight. Well done by Wake Forest. It wasn't pretty. But so far, they've kept NC State out of the, out of the net here in the second half. That somehow stays in bounds. <laughs> and Parente kind of got yanked by somebody in passing right in front of the referee. Kind of looked at the referee and says, I know you saw that. 
we talked about Parente's calming presence before. He sometimes receives the ball with five red shirts around him in midfield and is able to settle things down. Even with a backwards pass, you know, Parente is able to find an opening and, and keep his team on the ball rather than turning it over. It's really a valuable player to have wearing the armband there in the middle. Well, NC State kind of gets lost in the conversation because of so much talented teams, so many of the talented teams in the ACC. But as you can see on display, they have every right to be on the pitch. They are a very solid side. In fact, last year, four of their seven losses came to those top ten, it's usually top five teams. Yeah, welcome and to life in the and ACC, that's the, right? Yeah, that's the ACC, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yes, they've got a, a lot of talent back to, despite losing David Lorera. Harris tries to skip down the touchline, tangles up with Parker Cross and a whistle blown. Yeah, and I, I almost want to tell Parker Cross here, like, if you don't want to get kneed in the face, don't put your face down there. Like, he's just, he's fouling Calvin Harris over and over again. And, you know, he comes up and it looks like he's actually got a bit of a bloody nose, but he's the one who's going to get the yellow card here. And I, I agree with that. You know, he Harris has an opportunity to flick the ball down the sideline and Cross is just in the way. And you, you can't be in the way that, uh, that often. We'll get another look here. He ducks down right here. Yeah, oh, he took an elbow. Yeah, okay, I thought he took the knee to the face. And, and you know what? That's just incidental. Harris isn't flailing his elbow. He's not all over the place. Cross is just in the way, flat nice. out, and, and that's going to earn you a yellow card when there's that much open space for Harris to run to if he doesn't get taken down. Yeah, the referee's going to say, you're playing the man, not the ball. The yeah. ball's ahead, and you went straight for contact. It's almost like taking a route as a corner in, in pro football. You know, you, 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 you want to take an angle to make a tackle. Instead, Cross comes at Harris instead of trying to take an angle to stop him, and he's caught flat-footed and has to recover, yeah. and then that's where he, he commits the foul. Well, it's the third yellow card tonight, and all three have gone to Wolfpack players. It's Chole on the right side. He'll take it and move it backward. That's something that NC State struggled with last year as well. 37 yellow cards over the course of the season. You compare that to a team like Wake Forest who had just 18. And Ben Alcazar wanted Rula to kind of make that run to the byline. Rula wasn't on the same page, kind of hesitated. Ball goes out, it'd be a goal kick for the Wolfpack. Now Holcomb will apply the press. We got a throw in for the Demon Deacons. Score two to one. And the 46th meeting between these two. You could say 47 because they did meet in 1979 when Wake Forest was a club team. Of course, NC State was established in 1950, have an overall record of 528 wins, 456 losses, and 98 oh, ties. They've been to the NCAA the ball, 16 Cross. times. Have 20, 20 seasons, they've had 10 plus wins. This year is the four, excuse me, the 30th anniversary of the 1990 ACC Championship, the only championship in school history. Of course, 1989, Wake Forest won their first ACC tournament. That same year, they got to the NCAA semis. It was the deepest run the pack has ever had. And it was the year after they had Tab Ramos on the team, the 89 squad before Tab Ramos went on for his professional and U.S. national team duties. Pretty decent career for Tab Ramos. One of my favorites, now the head coach of Houston. And we got a free kick again for NC State. Score two to one here in Winston-Salem. 
Wake Forest is 13-0-3 in the last 15 meetings between these two. Bonk. <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> That's never fun when you got a guy bearing down on you full speed. Swallen just trying to make something happen on a 50-50 ball. The only meeting last year went three to one and came down to the second half, all because of the golden boot of Bruno Lapa. He had two goals and that one made it three to one. It's the last time NC State has allowed a player to have multi goals. And the great Bruno Lapa, who's now in the UCL, USL, pardon me, in Birmingham, and doing a heck of a job down there. I'm sure you'll see him in the MLS real soon. Under 30 minutes to go here in the second half. 2-1 our score. Stay with us for next, or excuse me, tomorrow. It'll be the number two team, Florida State Seminoles, taking on the Wake Forest Demon Deacons and the women's department. That's Sunday at 1 o'clock right here on ACC Network Extra. Wake Forest got a 1-0 win over the Hurricanes on Thursday. I think you're going to see the first yellow card here for the Deeks. Yep, there it is. Well, it gets it. Florida State beat Virginia Tech to remain undefeated. Let's take a look how Rula got this yellow, the first card. Just clipped, from, just clipped from behind there and then gets the worst for the wear as well. lost it in not a good spot at all especially holding on to a 2-1 lead Amy Smith with a long ball Alex Hernandez up against Escribano I believe we'll have some substitutions here. Looks oh, like Escribano is going off. Sada. He might be shaken up. It's Jose Kojima who checks in for the first time. Sheldon China in for NC State. Omar Hernandez replaces Jake Swallow. And Kyle, this is who I thought was actually going to be Bruno's replacement, Omar Hernandez. Yeah, and he certainly can play in that number 10 role. I think head coach Bobby Muse probably sees him as the long-term guy, but also a versatile player who could play on the wing, as you're seeing here. Hernandez with the service. A bouncer inside the 18. Harris backs up and falls down. I think you would probably consider Hernandez the the more talented player, the sparkling talented player, but still uh, relatively unpolished. Right. So Swallen holding down the spot. And another player that has been injured, was injured towards the end of the season, I'd say another weapon is Aristotle Zaris, which we may see as that attacking center mid. But, he, you know, really, he could play all over. Yeah, there's a lot of versatility on this Wake Forest team. and I think Zaris would be exciting in that spot as well. He's an electric player. You know, you, you consider Omar Hernandez a more technical uh, player, but Zaris just brings that spark that when he's on the field, you almost feel like this team has an extra gear. Long ball again. Holcomb up in front and too far out. As Croft read it and stopped Holcomb from maybe getting a hat trick. Well, Coach Kiefer has gone to his bench to look for some answers on the attack. He's gone to Sheldon China, the sophomore out of Clayton, North Carolina, only five foot four. 
was the top 40 forward in the nation when he was being recruited. Three seasons at NCFC under his head coach in Winston-Salem native, John Bradford. He has done an outstanding job at NCFC. Very nice relationship they have with the Wolfpack. Hernandez in the center of the pitch. Harris oh. immediately swamped. Still with it. Hernandez lays it off to Parente. Back to the right side of the field. Long ball. Double hopper looking for Kyle Holcomb. That was beautiful from Calvin Harris, just to retain the ball with four guys swarming him at the top of the box. Harris has such good feet. I mean, when Harris gets the ball, scouting report for him and what Coach Kiefer wanted to put on the field was as soon as he gets that kind of strategy, is as soon as he gets it, surround him. Coach Kiefer. We talked about the friendship he has with Coach Muse. They go way back. In fact, he hosted Coach Muse when they went on, they went on uh, visitation for Southern Connecticut. They ended up being roommates then, and they were on the same coaching staff. Followed them down to UConn. In fact, Kiefer was in his wedding. I'm sure they're not really friendly now. They <laughs> not will be right once at this moment. <laughs> they, they will be once that whistle blows. Both coaches said great things to say about each other when we chatted with them. Great play by Cross inside the Sheldon China. Al Kassar. To Suzuki. Good job by the ref not to get sucked into that moment. Just a 50 50 ball, and NC State trying to make something happen. Comes What's to Scholl on the overlapping run. NC State spotted him. Good turn by Suzuki. Two one, our score here in Winston Salem. Ty Collins alongside Kyle Baum. Delighted to have you with us here on the campus of Wake Forest. In state Derby. 46th meeting between the two. And even though Wake Forest is dominant, have been dominant in this series the last 15 meetings. Every game usually is close. It's close here tonight. Yeah, NC State has, you know, had one real solid spell of attack in both halves. And they've made the most of it. Wake Forest dominant otherwise, possession-wise. But they've had to work for it. This Wolfpack defense so compact, so disciplined. It's been hard work for Wake Forest, but... They've earned these two goals for sure. Continuing to push here. Yeah, NC State very stingy. That back line only allowing 23 goals last year. It took all the way to the second overtime for Duke to get one. Wake Forest and their potent attack has put up two tonight. All because of number three, Kyle Holcomb. Two assists for Jake Swallenville. Parente in the middle of the pitch with plenty of time to make a decision. Just something you don't want Parente to have is a lot of time to pick who he wants to pass to. Hernandez oh. over to Chol. Chol, goal, number three for Wake Forest. 
And the reaction of the NC State defense says it all right there. They're trying to set an offside trap, and, and Chole just had none of it. Right, perfectly timed, wonderful run, great ball through, and he pokes it in one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. But Chope Chol loves that tight angle shot, and he adds another one here. What a beautiful ball by Hernandez through the wickets. Back of the net. And his patience is really impressive. He made sure he stayed behind the back line before making that run. Beautiful pass by Hernandez. And Joel just kind of makes the time stand still as he puts it right through the wickets. It's his second goal of the season here in the 70th minute. Joel, an outstanding player for this Demon Deacon team. And four goals last year, eight assists led the team. Their team, all ACC. Coach Moose loves his kid. Why not? Very humble. Many times I've spoken with him. It's been great to chat with. And you wouldn't think he's so good just because he's just real kind of quiet and relaxed. And 46 goals. And a free kick awarded to Wake Forest. 3 1 our score now. As Chol with an insurance goal. Palacine back in, Sheldon China out. Garcia will go out, Batista back in. As Coach Kiefer shuffles the deck. Nice one touch pass by Harris. Harris through the 18, lays it off. Goal by Rhoda, who just got in the ball game. Back out and even see him come off the bench. His first touch is in the back of the net. And it's, it's just another display of how dangerous this Wake Forest offense is because you see Harris get the ball in space down the left, and it doesn't look like a terribly dangerous move. There's still defenders there who are, are following Rona. They're, they're, it, looked, it looked taken care of, and yet Harris puts a perfect ball in for Rona. He ends up all by himself somehow. <laughs> and, and this is just a, a brilliant display over the last 15 minutes by Wake Forest taking complete control of this game. Bring it wide open the sophomore from Hoover, Alabama and the Columbus Crew Academy, along with his teammate Isaiah Parente, his first goal of the season. We saw a little bit of him last year at 16 appearances, but every time he got in, he created things. I know he didn't get a chance. He had a couple shots on goal, but if you remember how Alistair Johnston scored his goal against UCSB, he kind of created a lot of chaos inside the 18, allowing him to move in and get a surprising goal, and it was the only goal to push Wake Forest through for the College Cup. 4-1 our score. Wake Forest has blown it open. Chole made it 3-1, and Rona makes it 4-1. It's a dominating performance by Wake Forest. They've weathered the storm a couple of times. They've had to make a couple of last-ditch stops on defense. That's okay. You know, the one goal, it, it was a bit of a fortunate moment for the, the, for the pack, but otherwise they have turned the screw here in the second half and and found openings where it's really not that common to find against a, a well-drilled compact nc state defense they've made a couple of mistakes and and that's really where you have to take your opportunities and wake forest had you think about you know an old adage in baseball they always say you get one pitch to hit every at bat and wake forest tonight has not missed its pitches to hit <laughs> waiting for a baseball reference. Hey, we run the gamut here okay. on this broadcast. We've hit, <laughs> we've hit the other football. We've we've hit baseball. The other football, yeah. <laughs> That's right. We have, we have gone and hit the other football, and we have the... Check baseball off the sheet. Check, yeah. We'll get cricket next. <laughs> <laughs> and we might get a basketball reference. Solid job by our crew tonight, as always. We usually have a shout-out list. Of course, I forgot it tonight, but you guys do an outstanding job. Our producer, Everett Hutto, 
executive producer, James Overstreet. We appreciate everything you guys do because this is first class. It's the first time we actually come here to the studio because we're doing this from the studio rather than being on site. I know they're tired of me. But I kind of like it. Get to see all what goes on. Yeah, nice setup. Really beautiful facility here at Wake. I know they've put a lot of hard work into it. They really do, and they get great people here too to work with. 17 minutes left to go. And Ty, you know, taking a look at some of the numbers here in this game, the shot total, we've talked about it a good amount here in, over the course of the, the match. Shots, Wake well in front 11 to four. And then you look at the shots on goal, it's six to two. You know, where where did those two shots on goal come from? The penalty situation, both of them in one moment. So really uh, outside of a, a fortunate penalty for NC State, the Wake defense has blanked them in shots on goal. And if you don't get any shots on goal, you can't score any goals. And and that has just been a, a wonderful job by Wake. They've controlled the tempo. Oh, man, They've played back. the number way 10, they want to play. Zio. That's That was something that was important to head coach Bobby Muse. And, and they have defended well, both comfortably and uncomfortably. It's been a, a solid performance. You know, I speaking of performance, we were talking about going through the gambit of all the sports. You said we needed cricket, but we actually did use a reference to cricket. You said wickets. Through the wicket. Boom. That's actually a a uh, croquet reference, but But then don't they say wickets for a uh, They do. They strike. It, it's a little different. Okay. There. It, it will give it half credit. <laughs> 15 and a half to go. 4-1 our score here in Winston-Salem. The number one Demon Deacons looking to make it 2-0 in their first conference win in their region. As they played Louisville in 1-3-1. And that the Louisville Cardinals are not in their region of the vision. Up next, they'll take on UAB. The Blazers come into Winston-Salem. Harris on the touch. Switching fields. Rona calls for it. The play, Calvin Harris. Harris hits the deck again. And almost played Parente, whether he meant it or not, but he was falling down, and Parente was coming up right behind him. That was a fabulous ball in, basically from the midfield line, right to the feet of Calvin Harris, even with the center backs. I think it was Hernandez from deep who sent that ball in. Excellent delivery. Hernandez has looked great off the bench tonight in that number 10 role. He's been given a lot of freedom. You see him right now on the far side, on the flank. He's He's finding openings delivering passes great technical ability on the uh, on the Chol score Hernandez has looked fabulous tonight coming off the bench Kyle McCurley is on the pitch too that's someone I was hoping to see tonight because Kyle stepped in for Joey Desart in the NCAA tournament his first two career starts were in the tournament Kyle did a great job playing in the center. So a free kick awarded to the Wolfpack. Let's take a look at this foul. Yeah, I'm not so sure on, on full speed I was a fan of this call. McCurley riding all the way. Ah, uh, yeah, there's the tug. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, full full credit where it's due. Spotted the shirt pull. Uh, and and here's a dangerous spot. And we identified earlier set pieces are really NC State's best opportunity to make things happen. Wake, all three goals conceded before this game were on set pieces. Unfortunately, that one never going to threaten for the Wolfpack. Well, it was at least in the right direction. It had some pace behind it, a little over the crossbar. And there's the national pole with Wake Forest on top, number one, Pitt. 
who came here a couple weeks ago. Looked really, really good. Coach Jay Vidovich's Wake team. Jay Vidovich used to coach this Wake Forest team and is now has rebuilt Pitt. And look how many number one teams in the sports around the nation. Number one, Wake Forest in soccer in the football department. It's the Clemson Tigers. And in women's soccer, it's the Carolina Tar Heels. Of course, right behind the Carolina Tar Heels is the Florida State Seminoles, who will be here tomorrow at 1 o'clock. You even go back a week, you know, the that United Soccer Coaches poll, obviously with the lower amount of teams playing here in the fall, they've cut it down from 25 to 5. But a week ago, you know, you see Kentucky on that list. A week ago, it was an all-ACC sweep on that top five poll. So, what conference does Kentucky play? The SEC. Not the soccer. Oh, oh, gotcha. Conference USA. I'm sorry. Kyle's gave me that look like I just called him out. But yeah. <laughs> South Carolina as well. I was just curious to see if you A lot of people don't know that. Yeah, only very few uh, SEC teams that have or well, SEC in the football department. Sure, sure. Yeah. South Carolina, one of them, Kentucky, the other. But they beat uh, Louisville in that uh, bluegrass derby 3 0. Collison goes down. Lake Forest and complete control. Jelani Forbes back in. Remember Jelani Forbes got called with a trip up on Alex Hernandez in the box, which we called a PK. Is the only goal the Wolfpack got. It's off the deflection from a wonderful save by Panin. And it's it's good to see you know him come back into the game and get some time. It's really great how this game has progressed that his team was able to pick him up after that and, and go right back in front after halftime because it's really just an unfortunate foul by Forbes. It was right on the edge of the box. Uh, I think the right call was made on the penalty, but it really, you know, it's harsh on a guy like Forbes who, yes, it's a foul all day, it, but it's it's so incidental just clipping the back of a guy's heels that, you know, you can really get your head down about something like that, conceding a penalty, the game going level just before halftime. And when your team picks you up like that, it's, it's great for a player, especially a young kid who's a freshman here, to have something like that happen and, and the team just to rally around him. Corner by Hernandez. Back stick, Garrison Tubbs had a whack at it. And a foul by Kyle McCurley. Came in hard, I believe on Parker Cross. I think that was David Rona up there who had his got his head to that corner too. It looked like it was gonna go over everyone but dropped right down at the far post and nearly put that one on net, just headed it off the defender. Coach Kiefer came to Raleigh from South Florida. And he did an outstanding job there. He had took the, the, the Bulls in his first three seasons. He led the, uh, his Bulls to the postseason in 12 of his 13 years. He came up to Raleigh. And in fact, at USF, Dane Brenner is the assistant coach Wake Forest was his captain. And new goalkeeper for Wake Forest, Cole McNally. Rona looking for goal number two. Out wide. Good to see McNally get some playing time here with eight minutes to go. Great job by Pannenberg today. Hadn't had a ton to do. Directed traffic well, made that penalty save. Solid day for the... Uh, Number zero for Wake Forest. And Pannenberg has made his mark 
in between the posts for Wake Forest. Brilliant year last year. 16 goals against, 50 saves. Had nine shutouts. And he just kind of rode that momentum that he had in the summer of 2019 because of the success he had with the Flint City Bucks. They won the championship in that USL, USL 2 division. All squirts out. The referee looks like he might go to his pocket here as he rushed over to Garrison Tubbs. I think just bodies hitting the deck. He's trying to protect the players, but Tubbs doing a nice job shielding attackers off and earning the foul. He's had a great performance in this game, Tubbs has. You know, he's put his body on the line, made a fabulous tackle early on to stop a breakaway chance. He, he got his body in the way of that opportunity here in the second half that uh, really ping-ponged around the area and, and was wide open in the middle of the box for Parker Cross. The freshman center back has made his presence felt in place of Michael DeShields, and he's going to be needed for a while this season. We don't know what the status of DeShields will be moving forward, and they are absolutely going to have to lean on Tubbs. Sears looked to play somebody and said, you know what, I'll just turn around and attempt a shot. Yeah, Kyle, talk about baptism by fire. Garrison Tubbs, hey, you're going to be taking Michael DeShield's position there in the center in that back line. Good luck. Yeah, welcome, you know? to, welcome to the ACC. Welcome you're, to the you're, ACC. you're a starter now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, sometimes that's just how it happens, you know. The best laid plans. And, and it's tough that, it, you know, sometimes that's the way it happens instead of being able to ease a guy in. But, hey, he's here and he's playing well. The way that 4-1 happened was Kyle Holcomb in the 36th minute and in the 46th minute. Scholl added goal number three, and then Rona with goal number four. And that's where we are at 4-1, under five minutes to go in Winston-Salem. Lake Forest with 12 shots now. NC State with five. <laughs> Interesting enough, Kyle, in the Louisville game, there's shot number six, but in the Louisville game, Wake Forest had the advantage in shots 12 to 5. Batista, he got that rebound, put it past Pannenberg to tie it up at 1 before going to halftime. Batista, the junior from Nashville, Tennessee, had his six appearances last year. He's actually intern for FC Dallas last year. Jose Kojima got tangled up with Pedragosa out of Villarreal, Spain. Another quality player that Kiefer brings back. Pardon me, that was Chase Oliver. And Jose kind of came over to get the ball, and Pedregosa was not happy the way he stepped over him. So Chase Oliver will get the card. It's the second yellow card for Wake Forest tonight. First one was to Holland Rula. We've had five total. Sears leading the charge. Forbes. Heavy touch, but still keeps it. On the play, the outside to Chase Oliver. Hernandez wants it. 
They'll keep it on the right side of the field. Ty Moore is checked into the ball game for Wake Forest. And there's a player that I don't think gets enough credit because this kid goes out and practices with this team. And I asked some of the players how they prepare for some, some defenses as far as their speed was. They say, Ty, Ty's the guy. Ty Moore, defender out of Brooklyn, New York is so fast that for them to try to get by him gives them perfect practice for whatever side they're going to be taking on. It's so important to have a guy like that in practice. You know, you look at a, a football team that has a practice squad and guys who, you know, have to put the jersey on every week and, and pretend to be a player from the opponent, opposing team. It, it works like that here, too. And it's so valuable to be able to replicate what an opposing side has. Sheldon China plays Hernandez. Hernandez with the cross seals with, I believe, a half volley. He's falling away that goes over the crossbar. Moore is involved in this here. Couple of balls into the box and well defended yeah. by the, uh, the group of, of Wake defenders in the box could have been dangerous there for NC State nothing comes of it half volley just over the crossbar Cole McNally the redshirt freshman who replaced Pannenberg very loud you'll probably hear him on the broadcast he has got an amplifier in his chest a little bit different than Pannenberg Pannenberg will yell at his back line but not as loud as Cole McNally He's the number 10 goalkeeper in the U.S. in 2019. He's on the U.S. National U under 14 and under 16. One, One minute. And he plays back up to Pannenberg. Now well, you have a top 10 goalkeeper playing backup. Under a minute in Wake Forest. Clearly. The stronger side tonight, four to one. State hung in there, tough well into the second half. But then it was only a matter of time before we saw Cho. And Cho came out, made it 3 1. And Rona's first touch of the night, I believe, was in the back of the net. Yeah, and you know, the. The old phrase, Ben, don't break, was fitting for NC State Ten, through this game. Nine, and then eight, the pressure just seven, got to them and they finally six, broke. Credit Wake five, Forest. Four, they, made, they put four eight, goals up on a very two, good defense. One, one, a very stingy defense. Wake Forest, who mentioned before, put up 90-some goals in the past two seasons. 